Hello, my name is Autumn Neary, and I'm an associate curator here at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Today, we'll be taking a look at Andy Warhol Cars, works from the Mercedes-Benz art collection. American pop artist Andy Warhol created the Cars series in 1986 and 87 in a commission from Daimler-Benz AG, today Mercedes-Benz. The project was a commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the automobile. The series was originally intended to portray 20 different Mercedes-Benz models, but Warhol died unexpectedly in 1987, having completed 36 silt screens and 13 drawings of just eight different vehicles. The series is notable in that it was the first time Warhol had depicted an industrial product of European provenance, having gained fame in the 1960s depicting American products from Coca-Cola to Campbell's, Kellogg's, and the Dollar Bill. With the Cars series, he would now focus on a legendary brand representing German automotive history. In both its scope and style, the series combines features of two distinct brands. On the one hand, the iconic automobiles of Mercedes-Benz, and on the other, the personal brand of a pop art icon, Warhol himself. Although the car series would be largely chronological, the history of the commission actually begins with this car, the 1954 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. In 1986, German art dealer Hans Mayer saw a Mercedes advertisement celebrating 100 years of the automobile. The ad showed a grid of cars, which reminded Mayer of Warhol's work, and he got the idea that Warhol would make a good fit for a commission by Mercedes-Benz. Warhol created test images using the 300 SL as his subject, and Mercedes-Benz approved a commission for 80 works covering 20 models. The 300 SL had a glamorous and exciting image, being the first sports car Mercedes-Benz produced after World War II. It was the world's first four-stroke passenger production car with direct fuel injection, and was the fastest production car of its time. One of the 300 SL's most distinctive features are its gullwing doors, which open upwards instead of horizontally. This work is essentially a portrait of the 300 SL. It features a chromatically divided backdrop, which removes the car from any context. This is a style typical of pop art and one that can be seen in variations throughout the works in the gallery. Warhol began the series chronologically with this vehicle, the 1886 Benz Patton Motor Wagon. The Patton Motor Wagon was designed by Carl Benz and was regarded as the world's first practical self-propelled automobile. Unlike other vehicles at the time, its design was not based on a horse and carriage and its construction borrowed many of its parts from bicycles. It was also the first vehicle to undertake a long distance journey when Carl Benz's wife, Bertha, drove it on a route through Germany. Looking at Warhol's depictions of the Patton Motor Wagon, there is an inherent tension between a car with such a rich historical past and the ephemeral pop art style. It is an atypical choice for the subject of a pop art compilation because the pop art movement, which began in the early 50s, tended to focus on everyday items and modern subjects in popular culture. Warhol's series continued with this next vehicle, the 1937 Mercedes-Benz W125 Grand Prix car. As its name suggests, this car was designed for Grand Prix racing. The car has a bare metal finish because race regulations restricted cars by overall weight. So the best way to get a heavy, high displacement engine into a car was to make the rest of the car as light as possible, even so far as foregoing paint. Despite its rather monochromatic appearance in person, Warhol used bright, contrasting, and highly saturated colors in his depictions of the W125. Showing the transformative power of color, he essentially paints the bare metal W125 into one of the most brightly colored and exciting subjects of the series. The next vehicle from the series we have on display is the 1954 Mercedes-Benz W196. This car was designed in two versions, an open wheel monoposto variant 
and a streamlined variant, which is the one you see on display here. This vehicle was regarded as one of the most advanced race cars of the day. In fact, in the model's first season of racing, W196 cars won nine of the 12 races in which they were entered. Warhol's depictions of the car are reminiscent of his portraits of celebrities and other public figures. Here, he deletes the shadows, giving it a flat appearance that highlights the car's dramatic shape. This portrayal of the car with its shadowless style and repeated motifs has often been compared to Warhol's 1962 works depicting repeated images of Marilyn Monroe. The 1970 C111-2 would be the last vehicle Warhol would depict in his car's series. This car was designed by Mercedes-Benz as an experimental vehicle to test new technologies. The car's original design included an innovative Wankel engine and a fiberglass body, though the car on display here, the second of the prototypes built, was fitted with a standard engine to test it against the one with the Wankel engine. Its styling drew on the wedge-shaped design popular in the 1970s, but was also inspired by the 300 SL, and so it also features gullwing doors. Warhol depicted the car as you see it on display in the gallery, in a menacing guise with its gullwing doors open. Like the prints of the 300 SL, this work features a chromatically divided backdrop, but here the dark fields of color give the car a dramatic and imposing appearance. Andy Warhol died in February of 1987, leaving the car series unfinished. In the fall of 88, the Guggenheim Museum in New York displayed the series in the first American exhibition of the artist's work since his death. Today, Warhol's car series is considered among his most important late coherent groups of works. I hope you've enjoyed this look at art and the automobile in Andy Warhol cars, works from the Mercedes-Benz art collection. Thank you.